today we're talking about children with life-limiting and serious illnesses. Andy, what challenges do parents and guardians face as their child with a serious illness declines and subsequently dies? I think the initial challenge that parents face as their child is declining is really the, the, the difficult emotions around um, accepting that that's happening and beginning to prepare for that. Um, and in opposition to that, the idea that you want to believe that something can be done. There is something more that can be done and you're not going to give up believing and hoping in that. And so how they try to put those two things together, both hold out that belief and prepare for the potential death of their child. And sometimes what you'll see during the grief process after the child has died is a renegotiating of those emotions. So let me give you some concrete examples. Let's say a parent um, does prepare for their child's death and talks to their child and lets them know that whenever they're ready, they can let go, that mom and dad are going to be okay. That a mom might later on review that and feel, if I hadn't said, you can go, would my child still be here? But conversely, if a parent has held out that belief that something will happen to save their child, and never talked about death, and their child died either more suddenly than expected, or they just made the choice not to talk about death to protect their child from that, that parent over time may feel like, how do I know my child didn't die afraid? Um, we didn't really process that beforehand. They didn't know that I believe they were going to a better place. So I think in the moment those things are difficult to process, and then over time through the grief journey they, they need to be reevaluated. And that leads me into the second thing that I, I see parents um, struggle with a great deal, and that is what you know, I refer to, and I'm sure others do as well, is the what-if questions. And those questions that I refer to to some degree are what-if questions. But another way that those play out are just reviewing everything that happened and almost trying to make sense of something that can't be made sense of. We shouldn't be here talking about children dying. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. Why does that happen? And so parents will go back sometimes and say, what if we had um, gone to the doctor a few weeks earlier? In a sudden death, what if I hadn't given my son the car keys that night? Even though that was a very normal act for the parent to give their child the car keys, but that night he had a car accident. So parents almost want to rewrite the script and make sense of something that can't be made sense of. Um, and so how do you how do you help them with those what ifs? What is your response back? To my them? response back to them is that that is your brain trying to come to terms with what has occurred, and I don't think there's a way to remove the what ifs. I can tell them they did everything they could. Um, that this was just a random random occurrence and that unfortunately that's true about the world but the reality is they need to work those questions through until they're done and so to have some tolerance that they need to revisit that over and over again and then I think the final the final um, struggle for parents is that their predicted patterns of how life goes have just been shattered and how do you realign yourself after that reality and how do you believe that that's not going to continue to happen? And parents frequently there who have children, the future is about the kids. And you have to reset all of that and begin to revisit what the future is going to be like and how you tolerate that your child didn't get to lead, lead a complete life, even though some children do lead very, very full lives. Despite the shortness of their lives, it wasn't a complete life. So those are the struggles that I think parents have to negotiate over years and years following the loss of a child.